wheels off. Got the jack stands underneath it. Uh, get the wheels off and springs springs on the back would be a lot easier. What we gotta do is uh, release the back of the rear sway bar, which are 17 millimeter bolts. Piece of junk. So what Kip's got so far, he's released the, the bottom shock mount so that the axle will drop all the way down. And now he's taken the, uh, the bolts out from the, re the uh, retaining strap on the bottom of the spring so that we can pull the spring out. should basically fall out. Yes. So while uh, Kep's working on the other side, I'm going to go ahead and pull the trailing arm out and, and put in the ones that I've beefed up with some angle to keep them from doing the old wishbone uh, action on the trail. Again, the big bolt in the front of the trailing arm is 30 millimeter, and this back bolt and nut are uh, 15 sixteenths. Gotta love that English ingenuity. Let's use a little bit of everything, make everybody happy. This is one of the trailing arms that I beefed up. It's just a standard trailing arm. And I welded in a piece of 3 16 angle underneath so that when it's in there, it's going to prevent it from uh, bending, wishboning, like we've seen some do. Unfortunately, it doesn't do anything about the angle. That's a, a future fabrication I'm going to do to correct the angle on it so that it's not such a steep angle going into the bushing. And go ahead and get this in. trailing arm my trailing arm all right well here we are putting the spring back in on this side we've already done the other side what we have to do here is Kep's going to pry it down because the spring is so tall that uh, we have to get a lot of length and distance here to get this thing in here so let's go ahead and see if we can get this worked out. Well, that part's in. Now we have to put in the ever so controversial rear block. Nobody seems to like them, they don't bother me. Another important thing to mention here is when you do a lift like this, you're going to have to replace your brake lines with longer brake lines. We've already installed the Safari Guard uh, steel braided brake lines that are long enough to take any flex that we put on this with this size lift. It's a little bit of a challenge because you have to get the, the ratchet on the inside. Not enough room for the ratchet underneath. Here we go. 
that again. So now all we have left to do is attach the shock over here on this side. Need to put the other wheel on and tighten up the, the lugs. Want to park it now? Uh, I guess we can as it's on the ground. Well, we've just completed doing the lift of the 95 Discovery. It uh, looks like we got quite a bit of lift out, as you can see. If you compare it to the shots we took before we started, it is quite a lift. Yeah. Now that I believe the stock height. From the hub, center hub to the fender well is 18 inches, and, and we're now at 23 inches. So you know you can do the math on that. What's that? Five that's inches. Five inches. So that that's the Safari Guard 350 springs on the D1 it gives you about five inches of lift. And I did use the blocks in the back to bring the back up in a little bit to kind of level it out. I still have the, the bumpers to put on. Is probably going to drop it back down a little half an inch, maybe. Yeah. This was a big step today, though. We've taken this truck off road before, and one of the things that was missing, still a capable truck, but it just needed that little bit of extra clearance. Yeah. And uh, we definitely got that now. Yeah, the clearance is definitely a factor. Yeah. Anyway, I think we're ready for a test drive. Yeah. Next time you guys see this truck, it'll be off road. That's right. We'll see you next time on Discovery's Off-Road.